Hello, welcome back to Digital Ventures Let's Build. My name is Jim. We are going to be making a Rocket League game in Scratch. Rocket League is a game where you have rocket cars and they fly around and they hit a ball. And the game uh, relies a lot on physics and uh, jumping and bouncing and things of that nature. So we're going to do a lot of that today. Uh, so the math might get a little tough, but I will walk you through it. Uh, the first thing you need to know is I have some sprites here. I have a rocket car, I have my ball, I have a floor, a right wall, and a left wall. Uh, the to make sure that the ball is larger than the rock or taller than the rocket car, uh, so that we can pop it up when we hit it. Uh, that's going to be important later on. So let's get to the code, Mr. Rocket Car. You're going to need um, some variables. So. Today we need to track a few things. We're going to track uh, x speed, y speed, um, and how many jumps we're going to be allowed to use. Because in this game, your car is allowed to jump once. Sounds weird that cars can jump, but in this game, you jump once, and then you get another jump while you're in the air. Um, so they usually call that a double jump. So we're going to program that into the game using a variable as well. So rocket car, make a variable. We're going to start with x speed. Now we're going to have other things in this game, like a ball, uh, and that might have an x speed. So we're going to say for this sprite only. And now the rocket car will, uh, you know, have its own variable that it's going to use, and it won't interrupt the other ones. Uh, they would call this maybe like a private variable or something like that instead of public. So we have x speed, of course I need to make y speed. And lastly, we're gonna have one called jumps. That's gonna track how many jumps. Um, you know what, just to be nice, we're gonna make this variable for the sprite only, jumps. And we're gonna move on. Now let's start off, let's put our car where we want it to start. My green flag clicked. Let's go ahead and say motion, go to um, let's type in some numbers, uh, minus 100 should be fine, and then um, minus 100 for the Y. So I'll place them over here and he'll drop down. Well, maybe we can do minus 150. There you go. It's close enough to the floor. Uh, I also have this backdrop that I drew that was nice and fancy, so uh, <laughs> I don't know. So try to ignore that, because uh, the true floor is this gray bar here. Um, back to the car. All right, so we're going to make sure that we point in direction 90. Just make sure it's pointing this way to the right to start. And then let's make that smaller. Um, and then we're going to set up our variables. We're going to set jumps. Let's just go ahead and set to zero to start. And we're going to set x speed and y speed to zero as well. We don't want to be moving at the beginning of the, the match. Okay, um, now the way I like to program these is I always grab a forever loop and I right away grab my change x and my change y blocks and then I use the variables y speed or change x by x speed and y by y speed. So now anytime I adjust the x speed or the y speed, it will, you know, uh, be affecting the car forever, the rocket car. Um, now, in this game, you're going to want your car to fall to the ground at all times because gravity exists in this. So we also can go in here and change our Y speed by uh, minus 0 0.5. Now, if I watch my game, it's just my guy's just going to uh, fall down. <laughs> and kind of just get stuck at the bottom. Uh, we're actually going to fix that right now. <laughs> That's the next thing in the code block that I see. So if we are touching the floor, so if I'm touching the floor here, this thing, I want to, I want to make sure that we don't go through it like we're seeing right now. So I need to set my Y speed to zero. And also if we hit the floor, we're going to give ourselves our jumps back. So. I'm going to set my jumps to two because I want to get two jumps every time I hit the ground. I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to tell. Uh, let's move this back up to 100, minus 100. 
And you can see at the start of the game, moves down. Perfect. Moving on. Uh, we need to now make sure that we can move left and right. Um, so we're going to do that with if statements. This is going to just be pretty basic movement. Um, key left arrow and key right arrow pressed. And when those are pressed, we need to, we're not going to change the X and the Y, we're just going to change our actual variables, X speed and X speed by, I think one is fine. Let's see how one does for us. Moving left and right, yeah, it's way too fast. Uh, two problems actually. When we move left, we need to go minus, minus one. Uh, but that's too fast, so we're gonna go to a smaller number, minus 0 0.5 and plus 0 0.5. And now you'll see, there we go. That's a more realistic driving car speed. All right, moving on. Uh, you might see if you're driving, you're gonna go through walls and then you're gonna get stuck because Scratch will keep accelerating or or accelerating this way, but you're stuck because sprites aren't allowed to move outside of this sort of back, this uh, game area. So it kind of just sticks it there, but it should really be sort of just like infinitely off the side. So to fix this uh, little glitch here, we need to make sure if we hit the left wall, we bounce to the right. If we hit the right wall, we bounce to the left. Um, and that's just using if touching. If this if then block, we're gonna have two of them for the left and the right wall. So I right click and duplicate. And we need to go and say touching, right click duplicate of course, uh, right wall and the left wall. Whoops, left wall. So if the left wall, uh, if we touch the left wall with our rocket car, we just need to bounce to the right. So I'm gonna do a really quick way of doing this. This is probably not the best way, but this is one way we, you can do it. We can say change X by five, and then we can just totally set the X speed to zero. Um, and that'll just kind of bounce them off the wall like that. You don't need to um, stress out too much about this part yet. Maybe, uh, maybe you can come up with a nicer way to bounce off of walls with the car, but I mean, in the in Rocket League, you sort of smash your no wall. You like sometimes stop, sometimes you bounce off of it, um, which doesn't, which isn't very realistic at all. Um, and we're gonna do the exact same code for the right wall, except you do minus five because you're bouncing to the right or to the left. All right, there you go. I've got my uh, left and right movement. As you can see, my variable for speed goes up and down. When it hits a wall, it goes back to zero. Great. Uh, let's do some jumping. So I'm going to get a new area to code with. Um, and start with a new block. A new event block called When Green Flag Clicked. Of course, as is custom. And we're going to go always or forever. And if we press the space key, we want to jump. But there's other rules. We can't just jump all the time. We have to only be able to jump when we are starting on the floor or if we've only jumped once because we're allowed to double jump. So if we press the space and if our jumps block is greater than zero. So as long as we still have jumps left, because you should have two jumps, as we stated here. If we touch the floor, we should have two jumps. So as long as we're on the floor, it'll definitely have at least one jump. If jumps are greater than zero, let's move up our character. So we're gonna say change Y speed by, let's go with a six, I think that's a good number. And we're gonna change our jumps available, our jumps number by minus one. So that'll make sure that when we jump once, we'll be in the air, we'll have one jump left, and then we can use it again. Um, 
One issue is if you hold down space, it's going to instantly use up both of your jumps. So what I can do is this uh, nice trick for collision detections that you should use a lot is uh, wait until. And that's why I have this in a completely separate block code block. Like if I put this in here, um, the wait until block would stall all the other movement in my car. I don't want that to happen. I only want it to stall jumping. I only want it to pause the jumping ability. Uh, because we don't want, if we jump, we don't want to be able to jump again until we let go of space. So we're going to say not key space pressed. All right. So this should do what I want. Go. Oh no. Oh, kind of. Okay. You can get stuck in the floor and you kind of have to hold space. So let's fix that. Am I getting, wait, am I getting stuck in the floor? No, it's working. Okay. Yeah, there we go. I got stuck in the floor and space only brought me up a little bit. So how do I fix getting stuck in the floor? If I touch the floor, I kind of just want to send my player, my car to a position that I know is good for them. So minus 154 is like right at the tip of the floor there. He's not moving anywhere. So uh, we're going to go ahead and say when you hit the floor, rocket car, we're just going to automatically set their Y position to minus 154. And that'll just set it up nicely. Now you can't really make any like ramps doing this kind of strategy. I just know that I can do this uh, because the floor is exactly there the whole time. It's a straight floor. So I know that that'll work. <laughs> so now I'm kind of flying around and our car is done. So that's the uh, first part of this project. Uh, the rocket car is completed. We can move left and right. We have jumping, uh, a little bit of physics, a little bit of gliding back and forth. Next time we'll be adding in the ball with uh, some more collisions and physics, uh, with a bunch more math. So uh, we'll see you next time. If you like these videos, uh, leave a comment, you know, like and subscribe, of course. And you can always check out uh, some of our online classes at digitaladventures.com. This has been uh, the first part of the Rocket League. Uh, let's build. Uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you.